Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Shed with me, Mark, and welcome to the first part in this series about Two Point Hospital. Now, I am going to be covering as much as I can of Two Point Hospital in lots of little videos. So, it's going to be basics, it's going to be advanced, there's going to be hints and tips, there's going to be lots of stuff in here, and I'm going to try and record as many videos as I can. Now, in this first video, really and truly, I want to concentrate on the first thing that you should know about and that is how to make an effective GP's office so uh, what we want to do first is just grab a hospital that has some space in it and somewhere I can uh, chuck a GP's office in to show you guys my way of doing it now there is loads of different ways of doing things in this game and that's what I love about it is brilliant in that respect so let's get right into this and we're looking at my hospital here that I've been working on and what we want to do is build some GP's offices right here in this section now it is key to make sure you have plenty of GP's offices in the space that you create when you first start this game. Uh, the first level is pretty hand-holding, but after that you'll find that if you don't have enough GP's offices and decent GP's, then it will just escalate very, very quickly. You'll end up with queues, you'll end up with misdiagnosis, you'll end up with loads of stuff. So it's really, really key to get the GP's room absolutely spot on from the off. Now, there are lots of different ways to do the GP's office, but the most basic way and the most effective way I've found is to do this. So a 3x3 three three office, as so, the desk crammed into the corner, and then the filing cabinet moved up just here. Now don't forget you can press control on your keyboard to get a greater sensitivity of moving stuff around. So you get you get real oh, if I can do it. There you go. So we put the filing cabinet right there. Now, if you look at that room at this point, it looks like it's all crammed into one corner, and there's a reason for that. So as you get further into the game, you unlock different things. So one of the things I would suggest unlocking as soon as you can is the medicine cabinet. And as you can see here, it's got plus one diagnosis and plus one treatment. This is great for these kind of rooms. It's great in most of the rooms actually that have treatment or diagnosis going on uh, because they give you plus one percent. You can put as many of these in as you can fit. So if you want a really big GP's office, then you can fit more and more of these into it. So they give plus one each time for both of those things. So let's give it a go. We'll cram some medicine cabinets in to get our stats up in this room. So we can fit two in the corner nicely there. And then what we can do is we can flip it around and we can move it over here. And let's get it as close as possible so that we can cram more of them in. Right, there we go. That's one. And look at that. As soon as we do that, the prestige level goes up. This is one thing that you really have to make sure of with these rooms is that the prestige level is decent enough. Level three, level four, level five, so that your staff in that room feel comfortable, feel happy, and they will do a good job as a result. Okay, so we've got those there. Let's see if we can cram one in here and here look at this there's so many <laughs> i'm gonna to have to leave some space for a radiator um so we can add one in here like that and we can add one right next to it there i think that's probably our lot okay so we've managed to cram in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten of those so that's a ten percent diagnosis bump and a 10% treatment bump. Now the treatment isn't so effective in a GP's office, but the diagnosis is. You want the GPs to be getting that diagnosis spot on first time, every time. So that's a good way of making that a bit more likely. So with the radiator, I tend to kind of put it in a decent position if I have got space, <laughs> but, and it won't cause me issues. Let me just zoom up above that so we can see it. Yeah, it's, good. it's not happy going in there. So we are going to have to put that probably directly behind the chair. And then the patient won't complain about being cold when they go in the office. You may want to actually change this for a medium radiator, just a standard radiator and whack it there. That way the whole room will be warm and uh, everyone will be happy. So I'm going to put that just there and that should heat the whole room. 
So at this stage you want to get the prestige level up of the room and one thing that I've found is that everything comes with a little bit of hospital attractiveness but some stuff comes with hospital attractiveness and room prestige so you need to pick wisely with what you want in these rooms. Now you can choose posters, they're a bit bigger um, and they generally, as you can see there, they're good for things like training rooms, the brain anatomy, the eye, no, the anatomy posters, they're good for training rooms. Uh, the other ones are just good for any room. Um, but what I've found is they're a bit big. So there are down here some awards. You've got bronze star award, you've got silver star award, and you've got gold star award. Now the gold star awards are $300 a pop. But what you'll find is they will ramp up your prestige level. So choose one of these or possibly one of these paintings. It's up to you. It's up to you how you want to present your room. But I find doing a mixture of these gold star awards. Look how quickly that gets bumped up. And sometimes a couple of paints. But look, you see they're bigger, so you get less of them in. So I'm going to put a doggy one there and then we're going to put some more gold star awards. Now don't forget you can put them behind cabinets and you can put them on top of windows, bizarrely. Um, so put them absolutely anywhere you want and you'll see look at that office GP's office prestige 4 so it's quite easy I'm gonna put a beach painting right here because it will look nice but that's there's no real reason for that that's literally just for me looking at the room and then the rest of the behind the cabinets if we layer it up with these gold star awards we will easily get ourselves to a level 5 here we go we can put loads here I don't think we need that many more probably one more there you go look at that GP's office prestige level 5 and so it looks decent there's enough room for the patient to go straight in sit at the chair come straight out uh, it's gonna be warm in there and we're gonna get our bump plus 10 diagnosis and treatment in there so remember to use these in other rooms I mean the treatment one is great in the bigger rooms the bigger treatment rooms because you can layer those up as much as you want in order to uh, boost that treatment power. So the next thing, once we've said, okay, that's my room, 20 grand, don't forget that as well, guys, just to put that in there. That room cost us 20 grand. A regular GP's office is only 5,800. So to have a prestige five, generally you need to be spending in the region of 15 to 20 grand. Uh, sometimes a little bit more if you have a bigger room, um, but you have to keep that in mind. So when your money is low, don't be trying to build one of these level 5 GP's offices. This is the best GP's office you can make. Um, so you don't need it straight away in the first level, but later on you will need it. On top of that, make sure that you hire someone that is skilled in general practice. Now this is really key because if you look at this, you get a 15% bump with each of these diagnostic skills, these general practice ones. That is huge. So we've got 30% diagnostic bump there. We've got 10% with these cabinets. And we've got a happy member of staff by being in a room that's prestige level five. This should be an oasis of diagnosis. It will be amazing to get diagnosed in there for the patients. So I've hired Dr. Jurgen Pong because he's got general practice times two and he's got diagnostics as well, which is a 10% bump. So he should be diagnosing people left, right, and center really, really easy. So that's 10 in the room, plus 15, plus 15, so that's 40, plus another 10. He's got a 50% boost on diagnosis. Now don't forget to add these up, guys. It's really, really important. The only issue I've got with this guy, Dr. Jurgen Pong, is his traits. If you look, he's argumentative and he's cheap. So argumentative is a bad trait cheap is a good trait cheap means he doesn't need to be paid that much you don't need to worry about giving him big bonuses big bumps in pay there's no need this guy is pretty happy being cheap but the argumentative one can be a negative trait if he's in an unhappy environment and he's not happy in the office he's in and blah 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 so let's dump him into that room he will now be our GP in that room now what I love oh no he's leaving why are you leaving dude Get back in there. Sorry, Jürgen. Get back in the room. Why are you not being a GP? Sit in your desk. There we go. Okay, so we have that GP's office. Final little touch. Don't forget to put benches outside these rooms so that people can sit there and wait for their treatment. Right, that's wonky. <laughs> that's really annoying me. All right, I'm going to put that there. 
There you go. We have a happy, clappy patient coming in. Something's wrong with him. Let's just check him out getting diagnosed. I think he has something wrong with him, this one. But he's going to get diagnosed. 100% happiness plus 19. Look at that. Straight away, first patient, bang. Diagnosed in seconds. This really helps you because you need less diagnosis rooms, those general diagnosis rooms. You don't need so many of them if you're getting really good diagnosis straight off the bat with a good doctor and a good room like this. So let's watch this. This one's going to get diagnosed with a broken arm. Diagnosis plus eight, happiness zero. That was not a good example. Beryl has a fractured leg and a fractured wrist. So not exactly difficult. Go to the fracture ward. Right. Next up, the last thing. Copy those rooms. Chuck them in. Make them active. Take a couple of benches. Stick them outside. And make sure you're hiring the right people in these rooms. So let's have a look at the hires. Doctors. There's not one there. There is one there. There you go. General practice. Okay, he's got a single general practice. Still good. Still a 15% bump. But look at his traits. You have to make sure you take note of these traits. Terribly dull. But he's got high energy. Thinks his life is a rom-com. And finally isn't the same anymore. So constantly falling in out of love makes people bored i mean if he's been trained up and he's got double diagnosis you'd be fine or double gp you'd be fine so there you go that is my gp's room that hopefully will help your hospital massively make sure as a final 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 thing sorry guys that you sort out the job assignment you don't want people who haven't got that gp skill to be working in your gp's offices obviously it's a bit different in the university hospitals because you'll find that everyone needs to work everywhere until you've trained them so there you go guys there's a couple of them waiting there now let's see if we've got a better doctor and uh, this one will do right here we go positive and thinks cartoons are good cheap and nice 22,000 okay so we stick her in there and off she goes no invalid navigation I don't know why again right you're over here sit in your seat there you go right we have another one so good pretty decent diagnosis um, plus 50% looking pretty good so there we go guys that is my first video GP's offices make them good and make sure to utilize these medicine cabinets thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time